Raheem, great to see you again. Great to see you as well, Pat. Happy to be here today. You know, Raheem, you look at Neil Performance Materials and you've been three decades in the rare earth business. And that's a long history in this business overall. And yet the rare earth uh, industry has been under a lot of pressure in the last year or so. What's going on? Yeah, it's interesting. Having three decades of experience has given us a very unique platform. You know, we started this business with separation facilities in China to give us a global exposure uh, to where we saw, you know, rare earth concentration happening, which is exactly what has happened. And as you said, you know, over those periods of time, there have been price volatility changes in the environment. And that has been kind of an extreme situation of what we've seen over the last year or two. So we've seen a dramatic decrease in rare earth prices, maybe a third of the price of where it was at its peak but actually not a dissimilar to price to where it was in 2018 and 19. So what we see in this industry is tends to see a lot of volatility, but fundamentally an end demand growth that is growing at a tremendous pace driven by energy efficient applications, including hybrid electric vehicles and wind farms and a supply base that still remains reasonably geographically constricted um, to one, one jurisdiction in China and the whole world requiring more rare earths, um, more rare earth downstream capacity, rare earth magnetics, and ultimately a more geographically balanced supply chain. Okay. I asked that question in part because I looked at your second quarter numbers and the revenue was down substantially. And yet at the same time, your adjusted net income came in at 13 cents a share versus five cents uh, a year prior. Uh, you're still providing the bottom line, even though the base prices have dropped. Yeah, it makes Neo actually a very different player than most other players in the rare earth space. I mean, most of the the press and the news, and quite honestly, the attention goes into the rare earth mining companies, um, and those rare earth mining companies have made dramatic progress over the years in Linus and MP and, and various others in the space. But they're highly dependent on price, uh, whereas Neo is actually a midstream and downstream player. We don't do any mining at all, so all price is for us is generally a pass through. So it's just a timing of when it comes in and when it goes out. Um, but for the most part, we focus on value add margins. We focus on providing customer solutions, technical and engineered solutions that meet our customers demand. So prices will go up and down over time and they'll have short term impacts on, on earnings just because of the timing. But fundamentally, we pass through all prices. So even today where others are, are feeling the impact of lower prices, we see the strength in our value add business and our downstream coming through. So revenues are down because rare earth prices are down, but margins are up because our margins are not dependent on rare earth prices. Okay. Um, you're known for being uh, geogra geographically diversified, if you will, inside China for sure, but also outside China. So I looked at this recent development. You've got this uh, sintered magnet facility, that uh, sintered magnets uh, being um powder metallurgy, as far as I understand, uh, in Europe. Tell me about that and the timeline on that. Yeah, this is a very exciting development, and it's a very required development. Um, as folks will understand, rare earth magnetics and sintered magnets uh, are really the core ingredient to make an electric vehicle motor work, a traction motor system work. So what cobalt and lithium are to the battery, rare earth magnetics are to a, a motor that drives the energy efficiency of everything that we're doing today, whether it's hybrid electric vehicles, whether it's wind farms, whether it's drones, whether any energy efficient application, if we're gonna to get to a clean energy transition, um, it's gonna come through energy efficient applications and rare earth magnetics are the driver of those things. But today, over 90% of all rare earth magnets are actually manufactured in China. They have by far the lead in do this. They have the strongest ecosystem to do this. And we participate in China um, in doing so. But we've also acknowledged that customers require a diverse supply base. Um, they can't have such geographic concentration in any jurisdiction in the world. They do require some local to local capabilities. The European Critical Raw Materials Act requires local to local supply. There's tariffs that have recently been announced in the United States that will require a, you know, a tariff on magnets that are coming in from China. So more and more governments, industry, customers, everyone uh, has noted the requirement to build more rare earth magnetic capability outside of China. And NEO is pleased to have started building our centered magnet facility several years ago. Um, and we've re recently got customer awards for that facility. So construction is well underway. Our technology and operations are well aligned with the exacting specifications of traction motors to today. Uh, and we continue to develop this really, really exciting opportunity, not just for NEO, 
but also for the world to be able to have a geographically diverse supply base. And Raheem, you're really focused on that bottom line because I also looked at a, a, a deal that you made recently where you did a sale of your Quapa, Oklahoma facility, and that seemed to be a streamlining effort. Did I read that right? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. That Quapa, it's a, it's a gallium trichloride facility. It's a good product. It's a good facility. Um, it's well run. The customers are stable. It has plenty of opportunity. But in terms of NEO, I think that, you know, I would like to see us focus on the areas of highest growth um, and put our management time, energy and resources into certain areas. And although, you know, gallium trichloride was a good business, I think it will succeed as a focused business under alternate leadership. And NEO will spend its resources streamlining what we do, simplifying our business and just focusing on the highest growth areas in areas where we've proven to be successful. Yeah. And you still have a five year agreement with them, correct? Yeah, we'll continue to supply them um, with gallium material. I mean, we've we still have a Peterborough facility that does uh, make gallium, but it's a bit unique. It is a recycler of gallium. And when we talk about you know geopolitical trends and things that people need to be worried about, gallium is also on the critical materials list. Uh, and China provides ninety six percent of of the world's primary gallium today. So again, high concentration um, and. Neo's Peterborough facility is actually the only recycling facility for gallium in North America. So access to the gallium units remains a critical material that we see great opportunities in. Um, selling to a particular end market with a particular product set we felt would be better achieved by a focused entity. Raheem, when I look at that focus on the bottom line, I also noticed that you actually, a rare earth company, have a dividend. And you've been repurchasing shares as well. Uh, is that a, what's the idea behind that? Well, I think that we have confidence in our business model. Um, we're not a mining company where we're pouring hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars into ground. And we're you know heavily on the capital investment side of things. Instead, we are a long-term player. We are a profitable player um, that, that has passed through provisions. So pricing does impact short-term results and working capital, but fundamentally, um, we're we're very confident in our business model. We're very confident in our ability to continue to to generate strong cash flows. And we've done this. We've we've continued with our NCIB. We've continued with our dividend, despite kind of embarking on two large capital projects. One of which we've now almost completed on time and under budget. Um, and we're in the process of building out our European centered magnet facility. But we're confident in the prospects. We're confident in the profitability and the timing. And we're confident in the financial wherewithal of our company that we can continue to do a number of things, all of which are all aligned at maximizing shareholder value. Raheem, thanks so much for your time. Excellent. Thank you, Pat.